this is what I was able to build completely by prompting and the whole site is responsive uh, with like a uh, basic dark mode. In this video, we're going to talk about AI tools and specifically we are going to talk about how we can use AI tools to speed up our development workflow. So what we are going to do is we are going to start from a blank page, try to define the requirements. We'll go through the design process, then we'll develop the uh, thing, then we'll deploy it on Netlify. My name is Ashish George and welcome to this video. So yesterday I was looking through uh, YouTube and I found a podcast by uh, Greg Eisenberg and Riley Brown. Um, and in the podcast, they were discussing about how they were using AI tools to develop um, applications much faster. So that piqued my interest a little bit. Uh, so I thought, why don't I try it um, today? And I've been thinking about uh, making a portfolio website for a while. Um, I have a portfolio website, but I've not uh, like revamped it or built anything on it since the last two years or something. So I thought, why don't I build uh, something using AI tools on that? To get more context on what I should build, what I did was I went to ChatGPT as always, and I asked it, uh, like, I want to re revamp my developer portfolio website. What are the things that I should uh, need? And it gave me a list of things that I should uh, look for and I, that I should do. Even with this, I had a rough idea of how the port uh, portfolio should look because uh, I already have, like I said, I already have a, a portfolio website right now, but it's two years old. So with this uh, as the guiding principle, I went into the design process. So for design, the AI tool that I used was V0 by Vercel. V0 by Vercel is a, a chat-based development platform. And uh, basically you give, a, give it a prompt and it'll, it'll spit out a React component or Next.js component. So I needed a homepage, I need a about section and a portfolio and so on and so forth. So I went here into V0 and I prompted uh, the AI to build like a minimalist hero section uh, for it. And uh, this is one of the things that it spit out. So uh, if you look at V0, there are three iterations of uh, the same uh, prompt. So when I added prompt like uh, a minimalist component for a hero section of a developer website, it gave me three options, which were these three. And I chose this one because I liked it very much. And I went with it. Uh, and I iterated a couple of uh, things uh, to try out if it was working. And the best thing about V0 is that uh, there's a code button here. When I click it, it will give me all the code that's necessary for, for building the component. So that's the beauty of this uh, here. Using this, this tool, I went back and uh, built all the components that was necessary. So I had a about section, I, so I built a card to showcase my projects. Then I have a content section where I would uh, add YouTube videos and a footer basically. So a single page application static site. With the design done, I have a pretty good idea of what I need to do next. So I need to build this all out. The next question is what are the tools that I should use to build it, build the website? The React code is ready, readily available. So if I choose Next.js, it will be a no brainer. Uh, it just works out of the box. But I want to challenge a little bit more. So what I did was I went with Astro because one, yeah, Astro is much faster. That was my one of my reasoning. And other was um, it's more SEO friendly than the others. Yeah, we could make uh, other sites SEO friendly too. But uh, I thought, why don't I try this one? With that, what I did was I used this command to uh, like scaffold out an initial project and open that up in cursor. So cursor is also an AI tool uh, for development, right? It's the AI code ed editor. So I've used cursor for this one. So all the AI tools that I've used uh, for this project is, uh, I've I'm using it for the first time. So uh, V0, only these five components are available. That's the first project. Uh, cursor, this is the first project. So uh, everything was a brand new experience for me. So I opened the project in, the curs in cursor and uh, what I did next uh, was create a template. So what do I mean by that? In the podcast, Riley Brown mentions that when you create a markdown uh, with all the prompts that is necessary as a like standalone template and use that for prompting the AI, uh, it gives a much better result. So I want to try that. In templates, I've created a markdown file. What are the different sections that I want? What is the styling that I want? What is the theme that I want? And uh, I've asked it to, uh, I've asked the cursor uh, command prompt to use the markdown file as the reference and to build out, build out a website uh, using this. And this actually scaffolds out a very simple uh, page. So if you see here, uh, this is very simple page that uh, it spits out the first iteration. Um, and there were a couple of things here. One is that I've not mentioned anywhere that I, sh I should 
the code should be generated using this design i have not mentioned that uh, i have never mentioned uh, what are the component structure what is the file structure that uh, the code needs to be generated into um, so i have not mentioned any of the, those things um, so what i did next was give the input of uh, maybe the uh, hero section here copy the code here and paste in the composer and uh, ask ask it to generate a astro component based on the react component so when i do this it will it it created uh, such a such a component where it is using the text and uh, the styling similar to what i've mentioned here it's not completely uh, copy based because there is differences in uh, how react handles classes and um, how astro handles classes and there are different uh, other aspects also but it's not a one to one copy but it has uh, converted the code uh, to, to to be made into an astro file so that's the key here um, and it was done all by prompting while i was editing this video i thought uh, some of the things were not uh, clarified much so i wanted to uh, clarify those things uh, first of all uh, why a prompt in a component wise way um, so if you prompt to uh, prompt to create the whole page at once it will do that uh, problem is that in how we actually maintain it afterwards so say if you want uh, if you want to go in manually and change, make some changes or debug or uh, things like that uh, where we cannot use uh, ai to actually do the thing uh, then if it's not structured properly you won't be able to like manually go in and make the changes because uh, the de debugging process will take a lot of time um, and if it's structured properly if the code is structured properly it is uh, ha has a separation of concerns uh, in those cases we can actually go and debug it much efficiently if we want to uh, do it manually so that's the reason why uh, prompting uh, in a way in a com uh, in a component structured way uh, would help so that was my thought process behind that and i thought i uh, didn't explain it much back to the video i paste the component from react i tell it what to do and i r uh, run the dev server and there will be some error and i'll copy paste the error and do uh, prompt it again and again until it's it's stable so that was the um, process that i fo followed within 2 hours of starting so if you see i started at uh, around 3 pm um, and uh, maybe 2:30 was when i started uh, the this process of why don't i try it out and within like 2 hours i was able to uh, like complete the whole thing and uh, then i was just uh, just took a couple uh, couple of breaks and then came back and built other other stuff like dark mode toggle um headers um make the ui responsive everything by prompting this is what i was able to build completely by prompting um and the whole site uh, is responsive uh, with like a uh, basic dark mode since this this was my first time trying it out there uh, there were a couple of uh, issues along the way where i could have improved the way it was prompted uh but due to uh things i did not know i was not able to do that as a conclusion i want to share few of my learnings and uh, some of the challenges that i faced after the development is complete when i was trying to deploy it to netlify i wanted to build the code but i was not able to do that due to some uh, node cache or something issue where i had to manually go in and uh, uh like clear all the uh, clear all the cache reinstall the node modules and uh, like switch node versions and try again so uh, there are cases where uh, ai won't be able to help you the second was with styling so i think i was using gpt where uh, it was struggling with um, styling when you uh, when i was using it uh, to style a certain component in a certain way it was always missing and like updating few other other components to update uh, the style and i had to prompt it multiple times to get it right but even then it was not perfect so i had to jump in and like quickly uh, set uh, the what i wanted to do because I, i i knew exactly what i wanted to do right so i just went in and corrected it quickly and it was all fixed up um, but yeah so there are few cases where uh, you have to manually go in and fix those issues and the third thing is uh, the idea that uh, riley brown had shared uh, using the template uh, to actually scaffold out the whole project i think i should uh, spend more time writing this uh, this template out in as much detail as i want in a way that i want so so that uh, the ai can do a much better job 
um at scaffolding the whole project at the end of the project this was the state of uh, cursor usage for me so i used 50 requests of cloud uh, 3.5 and uh, 56 requests of uh, gpt4 o mini this was my first experience with these with all all of these tools and it was pre uh, pretty educational for myself i think on the next weekend i will try to build something with more challenging and not just a single page application and uh, yeah let's see how it goes